Joining me now on Telecom TV are Bob Muckman of Intel and Klaus Martini of Deutsche Telekom. We're going to be talking about the collaboration between the standards and open source communities, but are we talking about a meeting of, of equals? Mm -hmm. Do both sides understand each other sufficiently before we even address the issue of closer collaboration? Klaus. Well, I make a comparison with a meeting we've had before, as we come where we're coming from. I think we are, we are on the way to be equals. Uh, because as we started the discussion between standardization, organization, open source project, I think there was not equal. I remember the time as we started with OPNFE and I was in charge in at NFE in this point in time. It was more or less a fight instead of a nicely conversation between both. And that definitely changed. Maybe you know, we are not on the right level, but definitely on track to come on the right level. Bob, do we have a meeting of equals yet? I, I, I agree with Klaus that when we started OPNFE, the, the Etsy NFV ISG, for example, I think there was a sense at the beginning that it was not a meeting of equals, that the, the standards body was going to define the way it was going to work and how it was going to, you know, how it was going to be defined. And, uh, but open source is a different beast, a different animal. And I think as we went through that process and began to, we started the OPNFE project, we found that it really needed to be a much more of a, an equal footing and a collaborative and cooperative iterative uh, engagement uh, because it really, we had to move in a much more agile way and we, needed to, we, we found gaps and we had to find ways to come back and say, this didn't, we couldn't quite do this without some tighter specification or the way that it was framed, it's not going to work as well. Here's what we found. Here's some revisions we'd like to make. And when that process started to happen, we started getting a much, much closer collaboration and coordination, made the whole process become a lot more effective. Klaus, looking at the lessons we've learned with NFV in the open source and the standards community, can we apply any learnings? Are there things we need to do differently moving forward? For sure, there's a huge learning is there because we recognize, we learned that the DNA is completely different and uh, that is a huge learning and this topic is more or less solved now. Um, it should be much simpler to work together and to talk to each other than the days before as we started this journey. And at the NFV is a really good example. NFV, I'm involved for a while now. Uh, we did great stuff, good, good work, but to, to transport the message to an open source community is completely different. And uh, we, we did a lot of uh, detailed standardization, open source don't touch the detailed standardization. They're discussing a different thing, they do it implementation, but now if we have good, some good examples that we are on the right way to cooperate and collaborate between Etsy and FV and on owner, for example, or OSM, not to forget OSM as well. Bob, was NFE kind of a prototype or a version 1.0, if you like, um, of the collaboration method that we're going to need more of as we move forward? Uh, yeah, I think the learnings that we got from that 1.0 experience are, is really going to help us to understand how to do it better moving forward. Because, the, you know, in, in the open source world, especially in a world where uh, the, the technology, the movement towards cloud is irrefutable. The technology that is being brought to bear in that movement to cloud native is um, so dynamic that we really need to leverage a lot of those technologies and a lot of that uh, cloud pace, you know, sort of development and, and refining into the process. Klaus, Bob mentioned the cloud community. Uh, do we need to do more to encourage technology development that we're seeing and innovation that we're seeing from outside of the existing telecoms industry to embrace what they do and apply what they do to telecoms? I think, yes, we have to do that because if we are not learning from the outside world, then by the end of the day, the telco industry in this way as it exists will disappear. That is, uh, that is my view, because uh, we are too stable in some way in this flexible world, uh, which are introducing new 
product very quickly and uh, the overtop players give a clear example how it should be done to be more beneficial, more successful than we do as a classical telco company. And Bob, do you see the need to widen the existing ecosystem? Oh, absolutely I do. I and mean, I think that we have often in the past, you know, viewed the telco infrastructure space as so special, so unique, mm -hmm. as having all of these hardened requirements. And, and they are there. But I think, you know, uh, there's so much mm -hmm. out there that we can leverage mm -hmm. and learn from, you know, the, the cloud the cloud movement, right, to, and, and, and find ways to work faster, iterate better, um, and, and we, have to, we have to be able to learn how to depre deprecate. I like to comment that because we are only saying we have to learn from the outside world. I completely agree with that, but, but sometimes I have the impression that the people on the outside world think we are the, they're the only one they need, they know how it has to be done. I think they can learn from us as well because we have some telco specific things to, to cover, that's fine. Um, I think it's more on a, on a partner level we talk about that. What's the best solution for us as an industry? We're learning from outside world, for sure. That has to be done, definitely. But vice versa as well, in order to understand what are our needs. That is uh, where I'm coming from. So it's kind of a two-way street. It, 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 I, I agree with that. I mean, you know, sometimes in the open source world, we, we talk about, you know, uh, break things and move quickly and fix it, right? And we have to be a lot more careful about breaking things yeah, yeah, when, exactly, we're, when, exactly. we're, when we're talking about carrier networks. Right? There's a lot of investment that's been done on the telco side, and so that is, we have to ensure that the telco is well spent, that the investment is well spent and not, uh, well. Bob, let's address the, the difficult question. What are the next steps? How do we ensure we keep moving forward? Well, I, I believe that there was a lot of good ideas and some particularly uh, important nuggets that were offered up by the presenters during this conference. And I think what we need to do is we need to make sure that we don't walk away from this conference and just say, that was a great conversation, let's do better. I mean, I think that we actually need to um, have some outreach, some follow-up on the conference and let's review some of those nuggets. When, you know, let's, let's poll the attendees and, and let's ask them about what, what were the learnings from this? What are the th some of the things that, the ideas that came out of it that we could really latch on to and formalize as a way of working moving forward? Let's agree upon them and let's try and institutionalize that as we move forward. Klaus, what are the next steps that we need to take? I agree completely, as I said yesterday in the, in the final notes, uh, to talk is nice. I like all the people which I meet here, but to make it really concrete, we need concrete stuff to do in order to moving forward. That's a lot of talks, fine, as I said, but to do something concrete, that is, more, that is, that is what should be done next. And stop talking, do it. Bob and Klaus, thank you both very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.